I can't trust anyone. I must assume all my intel has been manipulated. The hotline is the only channel I can trust. Hello everyone, my name is Ash, I'm acting director of the Federal Bureau of Control, and I'm contacting the hotline with an altered world event in dire need of attention. Control Ultimate Edition has breached our dimension. Please strap on your Hedron Resonance Amplifier and enter your nearest shelter space in anticipation. If none of that makes any sense though, then don't worry. I'm here to take you on a paranatural adventure through all things weird and wonderful in Remedy Entertainment's blockbuster masterpiece, and share my own experience of slowly succumbing to what can only be described as an obsession with this distorted science fiction world. I mean, it's not every day you get to fight a big old interdimensional worm in between filing your paperwork, after all. Hungry? I mean... Yeah, actually, I'd love a sandwich or something. That's not what you meant, is it? And since Control is such a singular experience, this of course will not dive into any main story spoilers. Though it's not like I could explain them in any tangible way in the first place, to be honest. To get into why I love this swirling vortex of complexity and concrete then, Control compels, or rather dares you, to piece together its story like nothing else. You begin this journey with Jessie Faden, the protagonist and player character, as she steps into a building she's been looking for for a very long time. One that proves the existence of things far beyond our wildest imagination. This is the Federal Bureau of Control Headquarters, also known as the Oldest House, a place of power serving as a nexus for various wild intersections of space and time that are housed for public safety and private study. It is categorically cool as all hell, despite being designed as a miserable slab of stone, and home to everything from stalking entities to mirror dimensions housed in seemingly innocuous items from everyday life. It's the SCP Foundation for Inanimate Objects, an X-File in all of its terrifying scope and intricate bureaucracy. At home in David Lynch's head, Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, and metafiction novels like House of Leaves at the same time. And like all of those references balled into one, it is impossible to understand in any logical terms to begin with. Jessie herself describes discovering this place in a Shawshank Redemption metaphor as the game opens. Like in that movie... <sighs> What is it called? The prison movie. The room's a cell, and the picture, it's different for each of us. It can be beautiful or terrible, but we're all transfixed. As if the poster in our cell has been ripped off and a whole new world awaits on the other side of the wall. Control is totally unafraid to plunge the player straight in at the deep end as it tears down our reality poster and pushes us through the resulting hole. Joining Jessie as she steps into the FBC headquarters for the first time, desperate for information she can only get within these brutalist grey walls, only to find the director dead in his office and the place taken over by a parasitic viral signal that possesses almost all of the Bureau's workers. You want me to pick it up? The murder weapon? Really? Oh, and now she has access to paranatural abilities as the world of pedestrian bureaucracy collides with powers beyond our known universe during the height of an aggressive psychic invasion. It's all quite a lot, isn't it? Within the first 10 minutes then, we see the very walls reconstruct themselves into new formations, we're taken to the astral plane to meet the board, an upside down pyramid in the depths of endless white space that controls the FBC and a whole other madness in itself, and learn that anything we would want to know about this place is carefully redacted from files littered throughout the building or locked behind walls only accessible to those with high enough clearance levels. Anyone that could directly help is either missing in the labyrinth of shifting corridors or plain old deceased, leaving the handful of staff left alive in a mess that threatens to consume the whole building and then the world at large. That's a mess not even Artie the janitor could clean up. There you are. You are here about the job. Janitor's assistant. With a disaster underway and almost everyone inhabiting the place transformed into mutated monsters, figuring out exactly what is going on is near impossible from the outset. It is absolutely bonkers, reveling in fictitious technical office jargon while showing us possessed bodies floating to the ceiling, and puts us and Jesse in charge of the whole thing as the new director as if we have any idea of what is going on. And it only gets more intense from there. 
Control's drip-fed story is its greatest strength, throwing us into a world already established and confident in its absurdity to the point that we feel like the weird ones for not getting it straight away. It's not even a mandatory part of the story to piece together all of the case files and reports that crop up as you explore the oldest house in an effort to understand its lore. But the world building is so compelling, it is impossible to resist the temptation of rifling through filing cabinets and pneumatic tube systems to learn more. This is a game I could not put down. Even when I had finished running through its epic story and collected near every trophy, I spent hours digging through the bureau for secret areas and files I might have missed, soaking up every last ounce of fantastically bizarre writing I could find. I mean, I could probably recite some dead letters from memory from the amount of time I spent collecting them, like weird little fever dreams turned into poems and typed up as meeting minutes. I think it's fair to say that throughout this mission to understand both the FBC as a concept, as well as the horrifying assault it's undergoing, Control jumps out of the confines of its medium in more ways than one. Perhaps most strikingly, Jesse isn't just an extension of the player as who we run around with in-game, but actually seems, at least at first, to talk directly through the screen as we go about our business, smashing the fourth wall to pieces and honing in on that strange, awkward feeling of being seen by a piece of media as we question who on earth she's talking to. The cell and the poster. I was 11 years old the first time I saw behind the poster. They told me I imagined it. I've been trying to pull it down ever since. Will you help? Yes, Jesse, I am sat here in my pants eating crisps while holding your life in my hands, but please just shoot the nasty monsters and leave me be. It's not just in big moves like directly addressing players that control leaps outside of itself though, as there are plenty of subtle moments that work towards making a truly infectious experience, something that feels like an earworm burrowing into your brain. So of course, on the note of earworms, it's probably time to talk about the hits. <gasps> This is the viral signal I mentioned earlier, the main antagonist of the game. One that isn't a flesh and blood creature or a shiny blockbuster boss, but an ominous resonance, a feeling, a frequency, a presence that takes over its victims in an aggressive assimilation into all things hiss. The waves of hiss come in for boding flashes of red light, delivering warped bodies taken over with hiss energy and utilized as aggressive weapons to force more hosts into their mysterious army. I mean, on a subconscious level, its very name, the hiss, is onomatopoeia, meaning it's a word that both describes and mimics a sound. So we are constantly exposed to this resonance every time a character references it in small jabs that put a player on edge. Hiss itself is a sound associated with aggressive, defensive animals like snakes and cats, a sound that picks at those primal, human instincts. That makes our hair stand on end, but a sound that means danger. All this amplified by Control's wonderfully eerie sound design. Control is perhaps strongest and strangest in these noises it uses throughout, whether it's the board's garbled conversations through space and time, or the incessant chanting of a building full of his host bodies. That fourth wall Jesse already smashed is crumbled down further to dust as the otherworldly soundscape transcends control and seeps into our own reality, sharpening the horror edge of this game to a fine point that then cleaves through your head. And yet, whilst it's easy to get caught up in the fascinating lore and world building of the game that's taken very seriously, it would be a huge disservice not to mention just how funny the whole thing is too. Yes, it is a scary, psychedelic, brain-frying experience, but it's also full of dry, abstract humour and walks the same line horror movies do between abject terror and farcical madness. Something so out of the realms of comprehension that you'll laugh as much out of nervousness as entertainment. Madness, my home! <laughs> The board are perhaps my favourite example of this, consistently talking through muffled, unintelligible language that is translated into subtitles on screen. Only, these subtitles are never clear, they're full of multiple choice words you can pick and choose to fit a sentence, playing into the interpretation of language to brilliant effect. Things like crisis and workday being interchangeable is a big mood, for example, and they often come out with zingers about healthcare plans and termination that extend past your normal office experiences in the mortal realm. 
the whole experience of Control is one of so many different aspects and genres, it feels almost impossible to describe. Really, this is first and foremost an action title, packed to the brim with innovative shootouts and paranatural abilities, bringing super satisfying and challenging gameplay into a unique world all of its own creation. There is nothing quite like a transforming gun you can utilise whichever way feels most satisfying, then levitating across a battlefield to get the perfect vantage point to use it. Whilst it could thrive on this wonderful gameplay alone, Remedy have made sure every aspect of Control feels compelling and engaging, whether that's in the hard-boiled action plot or the grand and incomprehensible corners of its setting. Everything about Control feels immersive and unknowable in equal measure, a title of contradictions that sees sarcastic jokes and potent psychological horror live happily together as you blast sound zombies in the face. From exploring the depths of the Bureau and finding mouldy crevasses packed with secrets, to honing your skills in the ashtray maze in one of gaming's most jaw-droppingly awesome sequences that comes absolutely out of nowhere. Which, I should say, I could happily do a whole other video on, but it categorically needs to be experienced firsthand. Control is an experience you don't forget in a hurry, as those that have taken a float through the oldest house will know. So there is my love letter to all things Control. There's plenty I haven't touched upon that makes this rabbit hole of a game feel different and fun for every type of player, so please let me know your favourite things about Control in the comments below. For those yet to experience this maddening, mesmerising world, Control Ultimate Edition releases on the 2nd of February for PlayStation 5, and is available as one of February's PlayStation Plus monthly games too, so there is no excuse not to jump face first into this gloriously weird masterpiece. For now though, I've been Ash and this has been PlayStation Access. Don't forget to subscribe for more PlayStation goodness. Thank you for watching. PlayStation.